a specific place. Which Chris a Phillips has a message for the president-elect. Do your job, do what you promise, and we are watching. Like many residents in his home of Erie County, Pennsylvania, a once thriving manufacturing town, he supported Donald Trump this year. Phillips has been unemployed for nearly a year after a round of layoffs at the General Electric locomotive plant in Erie. The company laid off more than a third of its 4,600 workers as production shifted overseas and to other parts of the country. As manufacturing jobs have vanished, government figures show that more men are going without any job at all. Phillips expects Trump to deliver on his promise. I can truly say that the manufacturing policies of him saying he's going to bring jobs back resonates very much so with not only Erie County, but the majority of this country. But reestablishing America as the world's dominant player in manufacturing requires more than tough talk. The deal Trump recently struck with Carrier to save 800 jobs at its Indiana plant may have been a quick win. Companies are not going to leave the United States anymore without consequences. I just don't think that's a winning long-term strategy. Mark These Zandi is the chief economist at uh, Moody's Analytics. Uh, he says pressuring companies to stay in the U.S. could actually raise their costs of doing business. It could be counter counterproductive in the sense that uh, businesses will begin to think that, uh, you know, if they expand and grow here, uh, they won't have the opportunity to move if they need to. Uh, they'll be uh, browbeaten and staying. The number of manufacturing jobs nationwide has taken a sharp downturn over the past decade. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there are currently 12 million jobs in the manufacturing sector, a 70-year low. A Ball State University study done last year found that trade accounted for just 13 percent of America's lost factory jobs. The vast majority, 88 percent, were actually taken by robots and other factors that reduced the need for human labor. They're building them over there. Zandi argues the key to staying competitive is something Trump appears to oppose. And so if we can continue to keep our borders open and trade open and keep our tariffs down and, and keep uh, engaging with the rest of the world, I think our manufacturing base will do a lot better than if we try to go in the opposite direction and close things down. But even if some of the jobs come back, workers fear that the days of high wages and union benefits are over. You know, when you talk to a General Electric or you negotiate with a General Electric, they tell you you make too much money. Uh, they constantly want to beat back your wages for you to keep your job. We can't keep going down the road of creating 12 and $15 an hour jobs. Even residents here who didn't vote for Trump are hoping for the best. Keep your promises. I mean, you know, you promised to bring work back here. Let's see if you can keep that promise. Words people in Erie now want backed by action. Robert Bumstead, Associated Press, Erie, Pennsylvania.